Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the new safe bar. We're jumping in again this time on our 22 streak, baby. We're going to go as Tainted Apollyon. Uh, see how we do with that. We've got Dark Path to go for here. Pretty fun character. Relatively easy, but not crazy easy. Um, ooh. This is a this is an intriguing item. Uh, we get damage multiplier on damage applies random multipliers to both tiers for total multiplier. Mm. This is tricky because this item can be really good and really 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 awful. It can it can literally ruin your run. So I'm gonna have to abyss locust it. It's it's such a it's such a like sad thing to have to do because I really didn't want to. But I I literally have had that item completely ruin my run before because it can give you a um ooh, smelt a random trinket onto you. I will gamble on that safety cap more pills. That's fine. Um, it can literally make it so that, like, you have, like, a 0.1 tiers multiplier and basically you, sh you can only shoot once a fucking five seconds. It's awful. Uh, but it can also be really good and give you some really good stats. So it's definitely a toss-up, but I think, unfortunately, because of just the situation of trying to build a streak, I can't take the big risk that would be taking that item. It's unfortunate it doesn't have a unique Abyss Locust, but considering it's a mod that, like, doesn't have... Um, an affiliation with Abyss Plus Plus from the developer. I kind of understand it because it's not a released mod. It's still a private mod. People keep asking, by the way. I get it con questions constantly. What is something wicked? How do I get it? Go to my Discord. There's a link um, in my Binding of Isaac um, channel on my Discord. Just go to the pinned messages. It is free to download for anyone. The developer is completely fine with anyone downloading it from that link. I don't know why it's not released yet, I'll be honest. It's a perfectly fine mod with, with a hell of a lot of content. It really should just be released at this point. If you're going to add more content, just add it post-release. Post I don't I, I just, I don't understand it. But either way, the developer wants to do what the developer wants to do. It's fine. Um, but yeah, if you want to play with it, it's a very, very high-quality mod. I'd say of the mods that I use, it's probably one of my favorite. Um, it adds some really, really interesting and fun items uh, and trinkets as well. Um... And so it's it's very 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 worth downloading. So I definitely give it a go. Get back over here, your shit. But yeah, it, it basically the the question is here: What sort of run are we going for? Are we gonna go for a full abyss locust run, or are we gonna go um, and just only use abyss locust on bad items? Because th there's definitely a toss up between the two, and especially with abyss plus plus, there is more opportunities and more reason to go for a full locust build because. You can get unique locusts rather than just these grey ones. Although the grey ones still do good damage. I mean, the damage that we gained from that item we just abyssed was actually pretty pretty good. I did not mind it at all. We do get Explosive Plum here. I can't remember what Explosive Plum does. I know that he explodes, <laughs> but that's about it. I know that he explodes on death as well. Okay, that's what he does. I, I knew there was another attack that I wasn't thinking of. Okay, he also spawns troll bombs. This is a really unique champion version of Plum, to be honest. I really like it. I've been playing uh, Tainted Keeper recently, obviously, for the last video. And now I'm in the mindset of, I can't get hit. <laughs> but actually, it doesn't matter too much if I get hit here. But I'm still going to try and not get hit, so. Good, good. And they'll explode on death as well. And we get a HP up. I'll take a HP up right now because our HP isn't great. And um, we're going dark path, so we'll just continue on this path. As for the question of the day, what's your favourite insect? What's your favourite insect? Just the locusts have got me thinking. Um, I really like stick bugs. St one for the stick bug meme that was pretty funny for the short time that that was alive. But <laughs> but also I just yeah I think stick bugs are like any any sort of bugs and stuff that have like. Crazy good disguise ability. I don't know. Those, like, I really like those. And they're really interesting. I think insects are some of the most interesting things on Earth in terms of, like, living creatures. There's some really crazy ones out there. Really crazy. Oh, that was really stupid. <laughs> I, I completely forgot that that ghost wasn't one you could damage. So I just kind of let it happen. Ooh, lovely. Kind of hoping for a soul heart, but... I will not complain about that item at all. Plus one tears up, which is a huge tears up. Um, and a damage up as well. Hot bombs is definitely one that we abyss. 
And we see, you see now with Abyss Plus Plus, we get a nice unique Locust that does some interesting stuff. It did actually say in the EID description what this unique Locust did. I probably should have read that, but I didn't. Some of them have, like, really unique effects. Some of them just have different damage values, like this one. This one can set things on fire. There you go. That's pretty good. I'm reckoning that'll be a lot more effective on regular enemies, of course. Because um, bosses can't get status effects as easily. You can still get them. And there you go. We got ourselves blue cap, which I'm just going to take again. And I'll try and go for Angel Deal here, because I managed to get a Devil Deal there. I'm not particularly comfortable with trading my HP right now. Let's keep it moving, keep it grooving. But at the minute, I'm, I don't know if it's because we're like on this big win streak, but I am really enjoying playing Isaac right now. I'm proper in the groove. Like, So I've, I've been backlogging episodes for my uh, holiday to Amsterdam that's coming up in a few days. Um, so I've been just getting episodes ready for that. Um, but I only needed like four videos of backlogging, but I've been backlogging way more than that, like way, way more. I have like 20, I'm like getting on for like 15 backlog videos, which is the first time I've had anywhere near that many in a very long time. When Repentance first came out, like about a month or two after release, I had 72 videos backlogged. That was, those were the days. Um, my Tursus, nice. Lodestone, we just had this last run and I was really enjoying it. So I'm definitely gonna take that. Having a very, very good time with my Tursus, uh, with my Tursus, with Lodestone. So I'm very happy to see that. Um, but yeah, uh, so I've just been getting into the groove of backlogging and I've been really enjoying my runs because I think there's just more stakes to the runs while I've got the streak going. And I think in general, I'm just going to try and build streaks more often, even after this one dies, which we'll, we'll see when that happens. Um, and, and like I said as well, um, I'm, I'm keeping the streaks as, as legit as I can, but if I ever die to what I would call some BS to do with like a mod bugging out or the game glitching, I am going to take it upon myself to, like, reinstate my streak. And if people want to wanna cry about that, they can. But I, I feel like my audience knows me pretty well right now, and I know my audience pretty well. I don't think any of you will care. And I think most of you will probably agree that it's okay. Um, at least I hope, I hope so. Maybe some new viewers won't be so okay with it, but... Oh, well. Oh, well. The more I talk about it, the more I end up sounding like a dick. So I'm going to stop... And we're just going to continue on with our run. And yeah, I really hope you guys are nice and invested in the streak as well. It's 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 a lot of fun for a... Like, I, I, as I said, I don't streak very often because I just play way too, um, like, uncautiously. I, I'm not a cautious player, typically. Um, and so it's it's kind of an interesting change of pace. And I think you guys... It, like, if you're watching um, Light Green Locust... This is tricky. I think I'm just going to take it as safety. Not a great item, but I'll take it as safety once... Right, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I feel like when, when you watch someone like Sin Victor or s s some of the people like Neonomi or whoever, who's who, pe people that, like, are very good at this game and, and, and play it in a very specific way to make sure they win, I feel like those videos, and, like, no disrespect to them, maybe some disrespect to Sin Victor, because I'm not a big fan of him, but still. Um, <laughs> um, oh, God. Uh, but... I don't enjoy watching those videos as much because it's kind of a foregone conclusion that they're going to win. Like, there is obviously the remote chance they die, but for the vast majority, you know they're going to win their runs. Whereas I feel like for me, you guys are constantly thinking, this guy's going to fuck this up sometime soon. He always fucks it up. It's going to happen. Also, we got a soiled heart there, which I very much like. Um, yeah, people like, uh, there's actually some anticipation of when will I lose this streak? When will it happen? Um, and I kind of like that. I think it adds more to the video. Adds a little bit more for me as well. Um, let's see what we've got going on in here. An Eternal Heart. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely taking that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much keys to spend on these guys. Oh, I got Lost Soul. I'll take Lost Soul. Thank you. Uh, and then we'll take Dad's Dip as well. But yeah, I'm going to say, I've, I've never... The, what's it called, prayer card there. I've never had that as a locust. And it said 1.5 damage and herming, I think it said. It said one other thing as well, but either way, I think this is going to be good. Then we got Celtic Cross, a grey shielded locust that has a chance to block shots. I'm also going to um, suck that up as well. We're just getting some really interesting ones now. But yeah, I don't think I've had a locust with herming before. I think that could be pretty good. I think we get one dip per room with this soiled heart we've got going on right now. So that's pretty good going. 
Ah, oh, thank god. I love rooms that do stuff like that. It's like an absolute pain in the ass to traverse post combat. And it's like, no, I'm just gonna fix that for you. No, so we, we don't get one dip pair room. It must be like a chance pair room to get a dip. We got a golden one there. Oh god. My little my little friend just died. Oh no, it, it, I think it is one pair room. Honestly, the soiled hearts are pretty strong with one random dip pair room, considering the power of some dips in this game. But yeah, the chance to block shots on a locust seems pretty powerful. We got a holy dip there as well, which is kind of nuts. I'm not going to stick within the holy dip constantly because it's just a pain in the ass to do. Good. I think our damage is at a really good spot now. With uh, with the amount of locusts we have. I think you, you sort of reach a critical mass with your locusts. Where you want to get to a certain amount of them. So you can augment your damage enough for it to be sort of helping you out a lot. But not you don't want to do it so much that your actual tiers are, are, are garbage. And I think we found a good balance this run. I think our tiers are pretty decent. And our, our run in general is pretty decent. But then we have the extra damage that we're getting from the locusts. Which is clearly very good. Red locusts with green glow. That's a high chance to inflict poison. That's much better than... Um, than what the virus offers to us normally. Apart from the speed up, obviously the speed up's nice, but I think overall, a uh, chance to poison on locust rather than chance to poison on taking damage is much, much more applicable for us. Oh, we've got a good amount of money now as well here. I'm liking this. Only problem with playing this character is there is definitely some, like, visual issues just, just because you've got so much going on on screen with the locusts once you get sort of halfway through a run and further. It's a little hard to see what's going on, but I think overall it's not that bad. Dude, we might be able to keep the soiled heart alive for a while, you know. Because it's it, I didn't realise, but it's underneath my morbid heart. Uh, or whatever those hearts are called. Can't remember what they're called now. Um, which is kind of crazy. I didn't realise it would be. Red locust with increased hitbox. Yes, we'll definitely suck that up as well. Because that's yet another item that I won't be getting too much damage from myself. Because it's a... Uh, orbital, but uh, dealing damage with it, I'll be getting quite a lot out of it. And it has a, an additional bonus as well. We do have a token there. Um, I don't particularly know what we'd use a token on right now. But there's plenty of options out there, so we'll see. Right. Go and grab that. Boom, bow. Yeah, we've got a really good suite of locusts, and they're all very varied. And this Abyss Plus Plus, if you're not using this mod and you're playing this character, what the hell are you doing with your life? It just makes the character so much more interesting. So much more interesting and fun. And it, and it, it takes some items like Prayer Card, which you'd normally take in a heartbeat, and actually makes them worth, um, worth grabbing. Six Soul Heart Locusts with a White Glow. I love that idea. Um... I think we've got a battery up here, um, where that card symbol is. It's not a battery, but it is one of these. Wait, that didn't do anything. What? Okay, I'm gonna have to buy the other battery, aren't I? It is what it is. But yeah, I, I want the, um, the thingy. So what, what I gotta do here is buy the battery, then I've gotta buy this and then do that. Yeah, baby. It's a bunch more friends with us there. Goddamn, we've got like a very holy feel to our uh, locusts going on at the moment. And quite a hefty bit of damage coming out of them as well, I'd say. This is slightly nutty. I mean, watch the damage output that we're getting here. We got the ability to set things on fire. We got the ability to... Oh god, I've trapped myself here, haven't I? Ability to set things on fire. The ability to poison. Block shots. We got herming on one of them. We got all sorts of good stuff here. Two white locusts. Eh, whatever. Okay, good, good. Down to the next floor. This is pretty standard, this. This, is, this isn't really anything special of a run. It's, it's kind of interesting with the locusts we've got going on, but it's nothing crazy. See what we've got going on in here. Buttermilk, you say. 
player will fire a constant stream of weak poop tiers in the opposite direction they are firing in addition to their main attack. Tiers will always deal... Uh... I don't think I want to take that. I, I know that I'm only going to get a regular Locust for, for destroying that, but basically I just think that item's going to be laggy. And the shots aren't going to really hit many enemies and do much damage. Uh, I keep forgetting that I've got my little soul body to protect. Honestly, he's nestled in amongst all of these uh, Locusts. He's just kind of hard to see. Yeah, we just got a, a regular Locust for that, but honestly, a regular Locust every now and again isn't a bad thing. They still do good damage. Oh, that was so stupid. <laughs> It was so stupid, I thought I could beat it. It was like, sort of running across the train track trying to beat the train there. What have I done here? Yeah, that was so silly. That was so silly. Luckily we got a red heart here to replenish that morbid heart. Good, good, good. I love as well, like, how sort of settled we've got within the mods that we have. Like, I feel like you guys, the viewers, and, and, and myself have a pretty good understanding of what everything does now. And, like, most of the things we're coming across at this point feel vanilla. Like, morbid hearts feel really vanilla. Um, e even to the point, like, soiled hearts and the, the hearts from Repentance Plus are starting to feel more vanilla. Um, and I really like sort of the way that the game has worked itself out where we've got a few things from like Repentance Plus and like Feed Folio I've added that make the game significantly easier in aspects. Um, and like reflected items and things like that that can make the game easier. But then Feed Folio as a whole makes the game harder. So it's kind of balancing out to the point where I feel like the game is a little bit easier than it would be in vanilla, but not a whole lot. Um, just because of the balance that we've achieved. I feel that's quite nice. Is this an XL floor? No, it's just a big ass floor. It's always annoying in uh, floors like this when you get a bunch of big rooms uh, before you find your item room or your shop or whatever. Because it's like, I don't want to waste my abyss charges, but I'm, I'm, I'm wasting all these rooms while having it on a full charge. Good. Do you know what would be absolutely amazing with this setup if we could get his birthright the birthright on this character is god damn amazing so if we could get that i would be pretty over the moon but obviously the likelihood of that is pretty low uh we did get um thingy here a soul heart locust with a white glow that has a low chance to block any projectiles yet another one to block any projectiles Two coin locusts that have a very low chance of dropping coins. I'm just going to take that as an item, and I'm going to take that as an item as well. Cool. I'm bombing my donation machine a ton at the minute, but while I'm on the streak, I don't, I don't care. Oh, unfortunately, this guy, I, I, I'm, I love the boss design, but I hate fighting this guy. Just because of this, where he does all the spikes and then the fart thing. Yeah, this bit. It's, it's not, like, particularly hard to avoid. It's just I always forget about it and get hit like I just did there. Take that. And I'm going to quickly go back and buy that soul heart in the shop just because I want to try and keep our angel deal alive next floor um, if we can. Let's move along, ma'am. Go. I think we found a really good balance between picking up items and getting locust as well. I think it's a little difficult sometimes to decide which way you want to go. Um, in terms of how, how powerful you want to be, but and I think Locust build is probably the better one out of the two gener generally because you can just fill the screen up with Locusts that can like that have spectral and stuff So generally that can be more like more powerful, but I'm liking the setup we got going on right now I'm trying to keep my little buddy alive my little uh My little dude here, but we'll see if that's actually plausible Good Back we go. But yeah, I gotta say, this is, this is one of those runs that just feels super, like, run-of-the-mill routine. You get in, you get out, you, you get your win. There's, 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 no, there's no real struggle. There's no real sort of uh, resistance. We're just, we're just having a good old time. And honestly, when you're on a streak like this, so regularly, runs like this can be a bit boring and a bit dull if there's nothing, like, super interesting happening. I will say, that, like, the locusts we've got are kind of interesting, but overall, you know what I mean. Uh, they can be a little, like, sort of humdrum, a little dull. Um, but I feel like when you're on a streak, especially when you've had a few really difficult runs in a row and you played some stressful characters, getting to have a run like this just feels so much more rewarding and relieving. 
It's a whole different vibe to the run. I'm not going to go in the shop there because I don't have money right now. And if, if there's Beth right in there and I can't afford it, I will actually cry. Good. Extra keys. Lovelies. I realise I've got a safety cap um, smell it to me, so I'm getting more pills and I'm not taking them all, but why risk it when we've got a good thing going? If I get a, um, a bad trip while I've got uh, a soul heart locked in and 50% chance of an angel or devil, it'd be silly to risk it. I'm not seeing Lodestone proc very often at the moment. I think it's because uh, my, my locusts are just killing everything before we get the chance. Some clickety clacks here. Clickety clacks are gone. Golden pill. Now that's a little different. I might I might use that eventually. I don't know. I'm, I'm undecided on the on the golden pill there. Ah, <laughs> lodestone screwed that guy. All the fucking troll bombs got sucked towards him. That's funny. Good old strength card. Keep that around for now. But yeah, do, do any of you have like a daily routine like I do with Isaac? Like obviously becoming an Isaac YouTuber like I did. Because I don't know how many of you have been around since before Repentance Days. But I never used to do Isaac daily. My, my channel's actually been through some interesting iterations. I've been through sort of like what I'd sort of see as my three sort of main, uh, maybe four main stages. So I started out, my very first video was um, was a tutorial for Enter the Gungeon. And I kind of stuck with that formula for a bit. And then I, I reached out to the people that had watched those videos and said, would you like to see a Enter the Gungeon series? And then for a while I did daily Enter the Gungeon uh, on my channel. Uh, until I, I can't remember how many episodes I did of that before I started doing other stuff. Very good item there. I can't remember how many videos I did before I started doing other stuff, but that, that was uh, like a fun little series there. And actually, even though my mic quality is bad and my confidence is lower, I highly recommend that series. It was a really good one. Episode 3 of that series is absolutely nuts, to be honest. We got like Mecha Junkin. It was kind of, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, um, so I kind of started out doing that. And then second phase was like I introduced some other games. Like I started playing um, The Binding of Isaac along with Into the Gungeon. Um... We're going Dark Path. Yes, we are. Have we done Boss Rush? We have. Zealot Heart there, rather nice. We kept our Soul Buddy alive as well. Um, going to abyss that. And we will go down to the next floor. Uh, yeah, so then I did a bit of uh, Isaac and a bit of Gungeon. And some people have been watching my old Isaac series. I get comments on them every now and again. Um, soul Hearts, lovely. And uh, we got camo undies for our zealot heart as well. Awesome. It's a very good one to grab. Um, and I think that, that sort of enters phase two, where I started doing some other things. And then off of the back of that, I started branching out. And I, I and then, like, entered sort of my third phase, which was um, doing a lot more variety content, where I, w I wasn't doing anything daily. I wasn't doing Gungeon daily. I wasn't doing Isaac daily. I was doing them like two, two, like I, I doing a bunch of games twice a week. I think that's what I was doing at the time. Um, and then uh, when rep like w when updates for games would come out, like into the Gungeon, I'd play it daily for a good while um, until the viewer count started to drop off. Then I'd go back to my regular um, schedule, and that was actually the plan with Repentance as well. I had planned to um, for the first month or two to keep it daily. And then to swap back over to doing it two to three times a week with a mix of other content. Um, and I basically, through two things. One is um, I uh, I was really enjoying Repentance, as I still am. Uh, which was a big driving force for doing it daily. Um, and for two, um, for, for the, uh, blah, 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 some of you may know that I got a pretty pretty massive and really generous shout out from um from two left thumbs when he created his video on the history of the binding of isaac which is now sitting at over a million views and he asked me if he could borrow if he could use my footage because he didn't have any like sort of good footage of a, of a beast victory um so he, he said hey can i um 
can I use your footage in the background of my video? And I was like, yeah, sure thing. And I didn't think it'd be anything crazy. I thought he'd just put my put my link to my channel in the description and just say say at one point, this footage was provided by the Turtle Melon. That's, that's the extent of what I expected the shout out would be. And that is, I was completely happy with that. That's, that's all I expected. In fact, I would be, I would have been completely fine if it was literally just, um, a, a link in the description. I wasn't expecting anything. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the absolute mad lad put, like, right near the start of the video, gave me an absolutely massive shout out, basically saying, like, he, he, like, Featured a little bit of my video, spoke about our friendship, and said, like, this guy's making really good roguelike content, go check him out. And it, it was, a, like, a huge boost to my confidence as a YouTuber, and a huge boost to my channel in general, in terms of uh, viewership. So, I um, I ended up getting a pretty big boost in subscribers and viewers, and that just kind of fueled the fire for um, playing more in Ends of the Gungeon, uh, playing more Ends of the Gungeon, playing more Binding of Isaac on a daily basis. And I just ended up sticking it daily from then on. And it's, uh, from there, it's really just got to the point where now it's more of just a daily habit. I've been doing it for so long that it would feel weird to not play Isaac every day. Um, and there is some days here and there where I don't want to play Isaac and I have to because of a video and I because I don't have a backlog. But that's why I try and create backlogs so that I don't, when, on days that I don't want to play it, I don't have the time. I, I don't have to force it. And it's very rare that I have to force it. And usually even when I do... I tend to start enjoying the video about halfway through it anyways, and I, I sort of get into the groove of things. Um, but yeah, um, and then as well, like, sort of post, like, once, once we started doing the modded series post Dead God, because the Dead God series got decent views, but not, like, crazy good views. It was getting, like, between four and sort of six, seven hundred views a video on average, um, sometimes a little lower than that. But it was, it was decent, but not insane. Um... Uh, so, so I was, I was reasonably happy with it, but then, like, post-repentance, when we started doing modded content, things really started to blow up for me. There was a point, um, that some of you may remember, where I was getting, like, I was getting, like, two and a half to three K views on every single video. Every single Isaac video. Which is absolutely insane numbers to be pulling on a channel of my size. Like, absolutely insane. So that, that was... That was awesome. And obviously things have petered off since then, but I think we found like a nice middle ground um, where we're getting sort of between 600 to 1,000 views every video now. Um, and we've got a very sort of reliable audience. I mean, pretty much all of you that are tuning in in, in the comments sections, I see all the time. Um, like, I, I, I have a bunch of familiar faces, and we're getting, like, new people. I will say my subscriber count isn't growing at a very fast rate, but basically 10k had always been one of my largest goals. So once I hit 10k, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> if we grow more subs, we grow more subs, but if we don't, we don't, and I, I don't really care that much. Um, I'm not I'm not that bothered if, if, if we stick at what level we're at. I, I've always sort of said to myself that 10k is my big goal um, and 20k is like I've made it. 20k is like you are a big YouTuber at that point. Um, I'm not really that interested in Scorch Death. Yeah, I think I think at 20k that's that's for me when you are a big YouTuber. So that's my next sort of large milestone of course and we will reach it eventually I'm sure. Um, like There'll be a there'll be another big thing that comes along for the channel at some point uh, where we'll get another big boost in subscriber counts. I don't know when that will be. It might be uh, Silk Song when I do videos on that. It might be a new rogue like that is the hot new hotness. There's a bunch of different reasons it could happen, and we'll see when it happens. Uh, but it, I'm, I'm sure it will at some point, and um, we'll get another big boost. But until then, I'm getting like sort of 150 to 200 subs a month, which is pretty decent growth. It's not bad at all. We've already grown to um, 11.3k, I think it is, or 11.2k in the time since I hit 10k, of course, which isn't isn't bad at all. I don't mind. And also, like, one thing I've always said about, like, doing YouTube and stuff, I mean, I enjoy it and I do it for my own enjoyment. Uh, it gives me more excuses to play games that I enjoy. Um, and also, I talk too much, so it gives me an outlet to talk more. Um... So it's, it's been nice for that reason, but I'd say probably, like, two of the best things that I've gained out of doing YouTube is, one, my community, um, like, the, the people on Discord, the people in the comments section that I talk to on a regular basis and comments, 
Uh, but also, the other thing is the opportunities it's afforded me uh, for, b like, it, both in two ways. One of them, in terms of, like, other YouTubers and uh, talking to, like, game developers. I've, I've been able to play Isaac alongside Kilburn and interview him, as well as, like, Ben Starr, the developer of Revita, and a few other people in that line. Um, and then there's been, like, YouTubers, I I'm, like, decent friends with BD1P, Alexa, uh, I've been chatting with Hutz. There's, there's a bunch of different people out there, and Hutz actually gave me a pretty big shout out on one of his most recent Enter the Gungeon videos as well, which was really nice. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's been really nice in that front, but also one of the other things that I love is I've obviously carved out my niche, which I'm not even going to say it. It's not, it's not a niche niche like some YouTube channels. It's, it's a niche that uh, uh, quite a few people have tapped into, but... The, 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 the modded roguelike content, I would say, is, is my sort of main niche, which, like I said, isn't exactly a unique niche, but it is one. Um, and my favourite thing about that and, and building my channel around that is that I've been gifted the opportunity to... Uh, oh, Sinner's Heart is such a damn good unlock. Holy hell. Um, we've been afforded the opportunity to... I, I, I have good relationships with uh, modding communities, um, such as Enter the Gungeon, mainly Enter the Gungeon, but also The Binding of Isaac. I have a lot of, like, friends within the modding communities. I mean, there's Pedroff who creates, um... I'll take seven seals. There's Pedroff who creates the, um, Ipecac mod that is currently sort of in, in a down period, but still, he comments on my videos every now and again, and we chat every now and again. He's helped me build mods. And then there's, um... Th there's people that have helped me create mods myself as well. Um, and, and just in general, like, I've, I, I've sort of become a known member of the community, and I like that. And also, as well, like, a lot of people have said before, um, that they, they appreciate me playing their mods, because they find difficulty with a lot... So, obviously, every, every modder likes to see their mods played by a YouTuber and showcased, but a lot of modders sometimes don't understand their, the mods that they're playing and will misinterpret things or they'll come across a bug and immediately assume, up oh, mod bad or mod broke. But because I have a background in coding, I kind of understand things a bit better and I can give the perspective from like sort of where the modders are coming from. And I've, I've had feedback from modders that they really like that about my content and I'm, I'm glad for it. And then also on top of all of this, like, um, I've sort of gained the opportunity to, to meet uh, people like never named never named um, I got in contact with because he's or at least he was he kind of still is another enter the gungeon youtuber He does law videos. I mean you guys have seen him on my channel plenty of times um, and he's now like a really 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 good friend um, That I would have never have ever even remotely thought about speaking to prior to uh, doing YouTube and it's yeah, it's just the opportunities it's afforded me outside of um, outside of growing a number, growing subscribers, it's just been awesome. I've really enjoyed it. Like, if my channel never grows ever again, I, I, I still gained so much from doing this. And I mean, I'm not, like, like, it's definitely not been easy, and it's, it's like, it's not just been the, oh, well, just make a video every day and you'll be fine. In a way, it has, like, there, there has been aspects of just, like, I, I've definitely stagnated in my content, and I think we're in a stagnation at the moment. I've not, I'm not, I'm not um, developing my style or changing what I'm doing at all. Like we're very much stagnated right now, but not in a bad way. Um, I don't think, at least. Uh, and and like it's been difficult, and I do sort of encourage other people to try it, but it's 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 not something everyone can, everyone can stick out with. I think really the the biggest thing for sort of advice for other people is you've got to. You've got to sort of be able to accept not doing well for a while. It took me a long time to start doing well on YouTube. But you've also got to uh, be sort of, have some perseverance. Like, I've been doing this for like five years at this point. And consider, like, if you, if you look at the grand scheme of things, um, the amount of subscribers I've gained in five years is not, not like very high in like the grand scheme of YouTube. I think personally it's quite high. But like, in sort of what you see on YouTube today, it's really not not crazy. And that's another thing as well. You have to, like, learn to not compare yourself to other channels. Like, for example, um, BD1P and Preets, when they were sort of starting out, they literally started their channel when Repentance came out and grew their channels to, like, 30,000 subscribers. Basically, really, really easily. Um, I'm not saying they didn't try, like, they didn't put effort in. Of course they did. But, um... It, it came naturally to them. They grew their channels, and they, their channels got a lot bigger than mine did for creating similar styles of content. And it was, it was kind of a bummer to see that I wasn't getting that same recognition. But at the same time, I, I, I was happy with what I was doing, and you have to sort of deal with that. And also, like, 
I, I, I have what I call the YouTube blues every now and again, where basically I like, I'll be perfectly happy with my subscriber numbers and my view count and everything. Then all of a sudden, I just won't be. And I'll, I'll like see my view counts and I'll be like, oh, we're not doing too well at the minute. Oh, I've not got many subs. And I'll get really down on it and it'll like really sort of depress me a bit. But then a few days go by and I sort of realize what I have and it, it, it kind of it kind of goes by and it's not a big problem anymore. It happens like once every two or three months um, and it's always like completely out of the blue. It's not normally sparked by anything in particular. But this has been a fun run. I, I, I've liked the fact that we've been afforded a run where we can basically just chat um, and talk about YouTube in general. I mean, I want to do more Q&A stuff like this. I mean, if people have questions for me that they want answered, I'd, I'd definitely be happy to do it. I realise it's the end of the video and not everyone watches to the end. There might not be a ton of you that are uh, that are going to ask these questions or whatever, but still, yeah, I, I, I like these types of videos where I can just sort of chat openly about how I'm feeling about what things are going on. Um, as I said before, um, I know some of you are here purely for the Isaac content, but a lot of you are here for my commentary and personality, I'd, at least I'd hope so. And so I think these videos where we just kind of sit and chat about things are stuff that people like quite a bit. Either, either way, we'll end off the video here, and I hope you guys did enjoy, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.